Good afternoon and welcome back to the channel. It's a beautiful, beautiful Thursday afternoon. Grab your fuzzy slippers and a cup of tea or a cocoa or maybe some whiskey. If you get some whiskey, maybe uh, you'd want to share with me. Anyways, uh, I'm, uh, I'm just getting ready to do another reading of the book. So grab your grab your stuff and a whoopee, and I'll see you back here shortly. In the last reading of the book, the main character was really just uh, talking to his wife and just kind of venting and asking questions and realizing that you know he had to be the change that he wanted to see. But he's realizing also that he needs to write about what they watched society do so that hopefully somebody could read his journal. And remember, as I read this, it is a journal. So if you are thinking that it's flowing in a weird way, remember that it is a journal. Anyways, uh, the last reading we... Uh, He told Summer that he loved her and then he had some things to say to God and let's, uh, let's read what he wrote the next morning when he woke up. When the first bomb was dropped on North America, I was already locked in that damn cell. I'm not even sure why. Did you know they called me a terrorist? Yes, I was speaking my mind on social media, but people thought I was crazy. Even my own family thought I was bonkers. The things I was going on about, like the notion that government had lied to us, the banks were stealing from us, war was a setup put in place to control the masses. These claims were all met with sp speculation and ridicule. Although, how could I have expected anything different? Indoctrination began basically when we were born. From there, school and the media joined forces to help shape how we would think as adults. It was absolutely pounded into us that things were the way they were because they needed to be this way. Things did not need to have been that way. Thinking about it, the last few days, I have come to realize the indoctrination was so deep that we were taught to make fun of and ridicule those who didn't think like everyone else, or questioned what we were being told. Holy crap, we didn't even notice. We were taught to bully our fellow man and didn't even realize it. Although now, I'm finally realizing what school's purpose was for our society. No wonder I never wanted to be there. I don't know how long I've been gone. Could be months or could be years for all I know. I don't even remember the date I was taken. But one thing I can tell you is that as time went on, you could feel the energy change when new prisoners were brought into camp. As time went on, the energy changed to something. But what remained constant was the belief that because they were fighting hate with hate, somehow peace would come of it. They believed that somehow with hate they were going to free all of society from those who had oppressed us. I had lived my life exactly the same way. I also believed that somehow with hate a positive outcome could be created. I understand now, because of my time in that camp, how the term evil begets evil was no joke. We didn't understand as a whole that what we thought about and what we spoke about actually had energy behind it. 
We didn't understand how important it was, the words being said. We stopped paying attention to whether the words we were saying were the truth or not. As I sit here, thinking about my role, I realize now that by being untruthful, we helped create this damn war. I realize now that by trying to fight hate with hate, we just created more hate. It's no wonder we nearly destroyed the planet. This war is like a disease in the body. It is an indicator yelling loud and clear that we have done something wrong. That we've made mistakes and need to fix them. The indicator was there a long time ago. But even I would have never admitted that I made a mistake back then. We became addicted to the same egoic energy as the guards from the camp, although they took it to an extreme. I want to say I hate that place, but even using the word hate does not seem right anymore. So at this point in the book, he's starting to understand that even the things that he thinks and the things that he says have energy and he's starting to understand that by using the word hate to talk about his prison he's then going to affect his life down the road by by uh, talking like that I have learned this is a lesson in patience and understanding this is a lesson in learning to accept things as they are Learning that you can't change the situation. God is in charge of it all. My life proves a vicious cycle is created when we refuse to accept things as they are. It's a cycle that is fueled by the ego and is based on suffering. It has no beginning or end. We did not understand that through awareness you could accept the situation you were in even if it was an uncomfortable situation. With awareness, you would have had a greater ability to get through. Instead, we got mad, and somehow led to believe that human beings did not need to go through uncomfortable situations. That it wasn't okay to have difficult conversations. Those were swept under the rug, and we blamed the other person. I did it myself while I watched others take away their ability to learn lessons and grow as well. There was no realization that we lived in a world of duality. We knew nothing about ego or awareness. Effectively, what we did was edge God out of our lives. And when I asked for help, when I asked questions, I was made fun of and told to get with the times. Maybe it's me being a jerk, Summer, but I wanted to be able to see the look on all those people's faces when they realized what was going on around them. I'm sorry to be petty, honey. Although it was probably enough that they had their reality television taken away. How did everybody make out without the TV? I bet some died, sitting there waiting for it to come back on. Sometimes, if I can shut my mind off, I feel the energy emanating on this planet. It carries the pain inflicted by torture, as well as the pain from people who have lost loved ones because of this damn war. What the hell is wrong with human beings? How did anybody ever in all of history think that war was a good idea long term? Yeah, okay, war was inevitable when human beings were a relatively young species. I even think in some weird way, violence goes hand in hand with growth. But when you get to a certain level, you realize that violence is no longer needed. Your actions should be coming from a place of love. We were learning. 
As a species, we were learning that we can transcend our level of awareness. It's what we're meant to do. But it's taking an awfully long time because those at the top are lying, manipulating, and trying to make things better for them, trying to make things better for themselves at the expense of others. Now that their system has been figured out, we know there is a connection to our world being hidden from us. We can work to reconnect. I wonder if some were already trying to teach this thousands of years ago, but nobody listened. Is this the reason why Jesus Christ was murdered? Because he was not just showing people how to live consciously aware. He was teaching them about love, compassion, living in harmony, and being independent of the government. What he was teaching had nothing to do with religion, but more to do with lifestyle. Even back then, love was not something that could help make money, so the men and women in charge had him killed. Nailed to a cross for all to see that this is what happens when you mess with profit. The common man should have stood up and defended Jesus, said no to the people trying to kill him. <clears throat> In my day, the common man should have stood up and said no to war. Instead, we decided to let a group of lunatics destroy the planet and society separate me from the woman I love, and now I'm out in the middle of the woods trying to figure out how we got here to this insanity. It is ridiculous. It had become so obvious that war never caused anyone's freedom. Nor had war ever been the cause of peace anywhere ever. It had become so obvious that war was simply for profit. But they tricked us anyway. They tricked us into believing we were fighting for our freedom. What we were actually fighting for and supporting was the banking cartel to control us. Had they been smart, had they not been greedy, they would have had far more than they had already attained. But I'm glad they had to be greedy. That's the only reason. Some people figured it out. Greed led to stupidity. Thanks for joining me for this uh, third reading of the book. And... Um, if you don't mind, if, uh, if you're listening to this or watching this, I guess, um, if you want me to make the readings longer, would you please comment? I'm, I'm just doing bits at a time and um, trying to just sort of, I've never done this before, so I'm just trying to gauge it on my own, but uh, if you're actually watching this and uh, you have some opinion, about uh, the length of time I should spend reading these. Um, if you would let me know, that'd be great. Thank you very much. Anyways, guys, have a great rest of your day. Peace out.